Hello, everyone. Um, thank you again uh, for joining us to yet another SciFest Africa um, event. Now, of course, just to explain for the first time in 24 years, um, the festival has decided to go completely virtual. We are embarking on a six month um, virtual program that's going to be consisting of presentations, uh, panel discussions, science shows and workshops amongst other things. Now this year's theme is a take root and nurture, and we are celebrating the International Year of Plant Health as proclaimed by the United Nations. Now, our theme recognizes that plants constitute the foundation of all life on earth, ecosystem function, food security, and boosts economic development. Now, Take Root Nurture also feeds into the 2030 Agenda for sustainable, sustainable Development and recognizes that plants are relevant in various disciplines. It is therefore that theme that is also going to be um, enforcing one of the things that we will also be discussing here today. So just to get to um, introduce a little bit more about what we're doing, we usually have webinars and we also have workshops. Today in particular, we're going to be doing um, part of our workshop series, which is called the Discover Workshop Series. Now this consists of four one hour long workshops with different scientific topics. All online workshops are a mixture of presentation, hands-on demonstrations, and question and answer sessions. Now, all workshops have successfully been presented as Zoom online workshops this year. Um, these workshops will also be getting uh, broadcast live on Facebook. So greetings to all of our friends that are joining us live on Facebook and of course, through um, this Zoom webinar. We do encourage everybody to um, get uh, children involved in particular, and all parents who may be watching who wish to have their children involved in the sciences, or at least to get to know a lot more about the sciences, to also encourage them to bring their kids to the show while we are also enjoying this downtime away from school. Also, once schools do open, we do encourage also those who are school teachers, and again, those who are parents, to try and get children involved and to those who are tuned in um, to also tell their friends about these interesting, very interesting um, seminars um, and webinars and workshops that we are going to be hosting here digitally. Now we've spoken, um, there's various topics that are going to be um, getting explored within our Discover workshop series. There's discovering volcanoes, um, there's also uh, discovering nanotechnology and uh, answering the question of what is inside a crystal. There's also going to be discovering DNA, the recipe of life, amongst the many other very interesting topics that will be part of this Discover series. Now to get straight to the point about what you're going to be talking about today, it is time for me to introduce our speaker and the person that is going to be taking us through today's workshop. Now, Tanya Reinhardt is the Science Center Coordinator at the Science and Technology Education Center at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, she was instrumental in establishing STEC in 2008 and has grown it from a science museum to a vibrant educational center for various levels. Now, apart from developing and delivering workshops, she also has a passion for science shows and Tanya's love for rocks, gadgets and experiments make her a frequent guest at events such as the Royal Show, the Zulu, the, the Zulu Fest and SciFest Africa and her Germanic sense of humor and her passion for geology won her awards as the best workshop presenter at SciFest Africa in 2013, 2017, and 2019. She also holds a diploma and um, PhD in mineralogy, in mineralogy from the RUHR University Bochum in Germany. Tanya, I will hand everything over to you. Thank you very much for joining us in the session and welcome.
Um, thanks, Kushle, and welcome and Happy New Year to everybody. Um, I'm very, very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be online again. Um, I've been doing this now for uh, since the last year, since March last year. And um, I think we're all just going to dive in. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the inside of minerals. So sometimes it might be for the smaller kids, it might be a little bit too technical. Uh, but I hope that I can bring it across that even you can understand it. So what do we need today? So definitely we need some Epsom salt, some hot water, and it, it's uh, preferably boiling water. So if some of the adults can please, if they are smaller kids involved, if you can just uh, please make sure uh, and handle this. Um, a glass, also a container and a, a small spoon. We also need, very important, 54 toothpicks, okay? And we need either little clay balls or little jelly tots, two different colors, 14 each. Okay, so, and we can just dive straight into it. Let me just share my screen and my presentation. Oops. Sorry, guys, um, I'll just need to stop my share and make sure that it's not big. Sometimes, you know, you do these things and you keep on forgetting how it's going to work. Sorry, while you do that, Tanya, let me just remind our guests that if you do wish to um, ask any questions, or interject live while Tanya is speaking, just simply unmute your mic and um, ask your question. Thank you. Okay. All right. So again, what we're going to look into is what's inside a crystal. And what we're going to do first is we actually want to grow our own Epsom salt crystal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain briefly how we're going to do this, and then we're going to do it together. So we, uh, we need some boiling water, and I already started boiling my water. And then we need to add some a spoon uh, full of Epsom salt into the boiling water and stir. And then we need to continue to add Epsom salt into the water until the water does not dissolve anymore. And I'm gonna tell you what it actually means not dissolve anymore just now. And then we're gonna put the mixture into the fridge and wait for a few hours. So sometimes what happens, and um, I actually just uh, did mine just uh, two hours ago, um, is that you still can't, if you can't see crystals after a few hours, then what you can do is don't, don't panic, you just have to reheat your Epsom salt water and you have to add uh, more Epsom salt. Okay, so then you, you know, your Epsom salt wasn't, uh, the, the Epsom salt water wasn't too, uh, too much full of Epsom salt. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sh change to my camera. Right, so I've got my glass here, right? And I'm going to add some boiling water. Remember, boiling water is very hot. So I'm going to add some water. And now I'm going to start adding my Epsom salt. Right. So you can see it's getting cloudy. So that's why we're going to basically going to stir. So what we need to do is we need to see that the salt is dissolving. Remember when you add salt to water, it kind of seems to disappear. And scientists call this dissolving of water, uh, dissolving. All right, so here you can see it's now clear, right? So we have to add some more, right? And I'm gonna add like two more, go. So you can see it's getting a little bit cloudy, right? So more. So we have to stir so that everything is dissolving better. So, sorry, I sometimes have to rise it up. Okay, we have, still have to add more. Okay, 
And as usual, I'm making a mess. Don't worry. There we go. So if you are successful, what you should get is you should get long needles, Epsom salt needles. They look very pretty. They are very fragile. So um, you just have to handle them with care once you've grown them. Okay, so you can see now that it's getting the, 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 the water is getting a little bit more cloudy. Can you can everybody see this? Hopefully. Okay, so you can see that it's a little bit more cloudy. So I'm still gonna add I think one more. Uh, one, maybe two more. There we go. And just make sure that if you have lumps in it, that you make sure that these lumps kind of are broken down. Here we go. So now it's fairly cloudy. So that means basically we have enough, we should have enough Epsom salt in it so that our crystal can start growing. So you can use this, not only use Epsom salt, you can use something that is called borax. You can even use the sugar crystals. You can do salt crystals as well. Okay, so this should be enough. So I'm going to put it to the side and maybe at the end of the session, maybe we can start seeing something. All right. Right, so now that we initiated our crystals, what is actually a crystal? You know, people sometimes talk about minerals, they talk about crystals, and what is actually the difference? Is it all the same or is there a difference? So crystals is everything that has a, a crystal form. So you can see all these pictures here. Those ones are all crystals. So we have copper sulfate crystals, uh, we have Epsom salt crystals, those ones are the ones that are the, the white one with it with it with a needle like or it looks like fairy hair. Uh, then we have borax crystals, we have salt crystals, and then at the bottom, um, these lumps, these ones are in fact sugar crystals. So everything that you see here are crystals, but not everything that you see here are minerals. So minerals are only those that basically form through a geological process. So our copper sulfate, there is a mineral form called chalcantite. And you see the blue circle, it's a blue crystal and where, where the blue circle is around, this is the mineral chalcantite. The other one, the, the big crystals, this is actually a synthetic crystal that you usually are not allowed to, to, to uh, call chalcantite because it hasn't been formed through geological processes. Um, these uh, things that look like hairy, uh, that look like, look, looks like hairs with a blue circle around, this is epsomite. So this is the mineral epsomite, which is the, chemically the same as your Epsom salt crystals. Then we have borax crystals, the natural forming one. And there at the uh, uh, bottom right, we have a mineral called halite, which you better know as table salt. So halite is in fact the mineral, natural mineral of your sodium chloride, of your salt. And then there is no real mineral for sugar crystals. Right, I'm gonna show you a little video. And let me just, sorry, I just need to stop. Welcome to the wonderful world of crystals. Crystals are everywhere in our daily lives. They are in our bodies and are found in nature. They are also crucial for new materials and new technologies. We use crystals to make better medicines. Crystals help us understand and preserve art and also inspire art. Beautiful crystals are used as jewels, 
and also for beauty. Crystals provide better foods and add color to our world. Crystals aid farming and give us green energy. Crystals from space and for space. Crystals to understand life. Crystals to save lives. Get ready to be amazed. Discover what crystallography can do for you. And I hope you've seen these, uh, this, this man standing right next to these gigantic crystals. This is a cave in Mexico, which unfortunately is not accessible. And um, this is how big crystal can grow. They can grow taller than men. So really some of, some of these crystals are really, or minerals are really, really amazing. So all the physical properties of crystals. So all your crystals actually have some properties. Uh, a crystal can be hard or soft. It can have a specific breaking pattern. So that means, um, for example, on the, on the, on the right-hand side, and I'll, show, I'll just uh, show, uh, show you here, this is the mineral mica which you can peel and it flakes off and, it, uh, and you can peel layers of layers of layers of it. Right next is a mineral called calcite. When you whack with a hammer on it, it always breaks in the same pattern. The shape of crystals here, also the color of the crystals, if it's yellow, if it's blue, if it's green, if it's got a metallic color and so on, it results from the internal arrangement of atoms. So some of you might not have heard of atoms. So atoms are the smallest building blocks that, every, uh, that you can have. And all these internal arrangements of these atoms, this is what makes up its crystal structure. And let me just show you some of my minerals that I brought along. Okay, so here I've got a mineral called pyrite. This is a mineral called sphalerite. And here you can see kind of a nice block. This is a mineral called galena. Okay, so what is a crystal structure? A crystal structure basically consists of atoms. So these small, small, small building blocks, think about it as, as kind of Lego blocks that are arranged in an ordered repeating pattern. And this pattern is repeated over and over again in, in three dimensions. So to the side, up and so on. And here you, we can see two crystals that are made from the atom carbon. Okay, so you can have carbon atoms that form diamonds. So remember, diamonds are very, very, very hard. They are the hardest mineral that, that you can get. And atom, or carbon atoms can also form a mineral called graphite. And if you don't know what graphite is, you just have a look at your pencil lead. This is what graphite is. Pen or pencil lead is basically graphite. So you can write on it. So it's very, very, very soft. And when we look at the arrangements of atoms, so here we have the, the uh, mineral that is made out of the same type of atoms, but they are arranged differently. So on the left hand side, you can see that they are, uh, the, the uh, carbon atoms are kind of linked uh, quite, quite nicely. Uh, the, on the graphite side, you can see that the carbon atoms are basically uh, linked in sheets. So they form sheets. And this is basically why they are so soft, because these sheets can just move past each other. So coming back to the questions, what are atoms? So atoms are the basic building blocks of matter, of all the elements that we know. So if think about of gold, think about uh, silver, platinum, sulfur, carbon. So in all these atoms make up every day's object. So here I've brought you the chemical formula. So all the types of atoms that make up our Epsom salt, and also all the atoms that you have when you do water. So water, for example, is you need two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom to wake uh, water. And what keeps the atoms together are chemical bonds. So it's kind of, you have to think about it as, a, as an attraction between atoms. 
And this attraction allows you to combine two or more atoms into a molecule. And all the information about the property of the crystal, remember its shape, its colors, its, uh, if it's soft, if it's hard, is in this kind of a unit cell. And this unit cell is repeated in three dimensions to form the crystal. And the more unit cells you have, the larger the crystal. So in here you can see, here you've got the atoms, okay? And they are connected through bonds. And this will give you your unit cell. Okay, so here's our unit cell as a block. So now if we take this block and we kind of distribute it in all sorts of different directions, we will actually get a larger crystal. Okay, so this is basically how your crystal kind of grows. just show you maybe with some Lego blocks. So I've got these Lego blocks. So this is your unit cell. So now you start off usually with one unit cell. So here we go. So there's your one unit cell. Now you add, and, and sorry about the different colors. I wanted to get the same color, but I only have this one. So this is the same unit block, the same unit cell. So now my unit block is larger, isn't it? And I can add more to it. And more of these unit blocks. And you can see how my crystal is in fact, oops, sorry, uh, is breaking down. This is also can happen. Is starting to grow bigger and bigger. Right, so now we have a long needle shaped crystal, for example. So now comes a question that I want to ask you. If you have some table sort, or even sometimes, yeah, table sort, just go and grab a little bit of salt, okay? And ask yourself the question, how many atoms can we fit into one grain of salt? And let me just show you here. So on my finger, you can see table salt, even if you don't have table salt. So what I want you to do is think about very hard, how many of these atoms can you fit into one of these tiny little grains? And I have to put even put my glasses on to see how many of these ones can you fit into a tiny little grain of salt? And you can answer it if you want to. Does anybody want to answer the question? Any guess, guesstimate? Anybody who's keen on, on guesstimating how many atoms you can fit into a single grain of salt? A thousand. A thousand. A thousand. Wow. Uh, can you imagine a thousand of these of these atoms in in, a, in this tiny little crystal? Yo, this is awesome! A thousand. Anybody else who wants to give a guess? Maybe some of these adults that are sitting here. Any guess? I know the adults are usually very very shy, hey? Um, I don't know. No, I think it's more than one. You think it's more than that? So what is what is your guess? I, I think it's 10. You think it's 10? So 10 atoms into one grain of table salt. Okay. Wow. So I think I think you've done a very good estimate. Okay, so let's have a look at the figure. All right. Is it one? No, sorry guys, it's not one. 1,200. Mm, no, it's not 1,200. And it's not 1.2 million. And it's not this number here. 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 Oh, no, it is actually. So this number reads 1.2 quintillion or 1,200 quadrillion atoms fit 
into one grain of table salt. Oh, can you imagine? So you guess a thousand, and I think a thousand is a, is a pretty good is a pretty good estimate. Ten is also, I think, is, is a very good estimate. But one point two quintillion, one thousand two hundred quadrillion into a tiny, tiny little grain. So it actually tells us about the size of the atoms. So what do you think? Is are these atoms very big or very small? Anybody wants to guess? No, no, you can't, you don't really have to guess. Atoms are in fact very, 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 very small. So 1.2 quintillion atoms fit into a single grain of salt. So atoms are very, very small. But if atoms are very, very small, how can we actually see what the structure, how, how do we know that, you know, uh, the, the arrangements of atoms, how they look like? And scientists actually use something that is called x-rays. So first of all, no normal microscope for this. So if you take out your microscope and you want to have a look at it, it doesn't work. You can't see atoms with that. And what scientists do is they beam something that's called x-rays onto crystals. And you probably know x-rays when you go to hospital and you have a broken bone or something like this, that people in fact x-ray your bone uh, use x-rays to, to, to investigate your bones. And atoms as well scatter the rays just as light is reflected when it hits in any object. So what, uh, what the at atoms do is they scatter the ray, these x-rays. And what scientists do is they basically collect these scattered rays, which is called diffraction, either on film or by a computer. But the sample needs to be large enough to give any results. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you using a laser pointer how this kind of looks like or how you can visual it. Unfortunately, I don't have I don't have um, real x-rays here. So but just what we assume is that my laser pointer here and you can see when I shine my light on it, there's a green light there so that my laser pointer is in fact just like an x-ray. So, and usually what they what the scientists do is they beam an x-ray, so just like the laser pointer here, an x-ray onto a crystal. And let's assume this is my crystal and let's see what's happening. And you can see that now the light is scattered. And this is exactly what's happening in a with a crystal as well. So the atoms scatter the rays the x-rays, just like my laser beam, and this is a diffraction grating, just like this one scatters my laser beam, and you get a fantastic pattern. And this pattern is unique to every, is unique to every, um, oh, sorry, is to unique to um, every, mineral or crystal. And this is the very first x-ray image of a copper sulfate crystal. So, and this is from 1912. It doesn't look like much. It looks like as if, you know, it looks like if, if you uh, have a look at it, like an artist impression, it looks like a crab or something like this. But this basically revolutionized science. just play you another video. Why water boils at 100 degrees and methane at minus 161. Why blood is red and grass is green. Why diamond is hard and wax soft. Why glaciers flow and iron gets hard when you have it. The answers to all these problems have come from structural analysis. That's how the Nobel Prize winner, Max Perutz, summed up X-ray crystallography. Never heard of it? Don't worry, not many people have. Yet it's arguably one of the greatest innovations of the 20th century. 28 Nobel Prizes have been awarded to projects related to crystallography. And the very first of those is where it all began. 
It's now a hundred years since following early work by Max von Laue, the first structures were determined by father and son team William and Lawrence Bragg. In 1913, they fired a narrow beam of X-rays at a humble salt crystal and photographed the diffraction pattern as the crystals split the beam into many rays. Lawrence soon realized that this pattern held the clues to the atomic structure of the crystal itself. The equation he developed, Bragg's Law, made it possible to work out how the spots in the diffraction pattern are related to the specific arrangement of atoms in the crystal. Two years on, and the Braggs were awarded the Nobel Prize. Impressive stuff. Not only that, the Braggs mentored a dream team of crystallographers who went on to work out the structures of a huge range of molecules. From Kathleen Lonsdale, J.D. Bernal, and Dorothy Hodgkin, to David Phillips, John Kendrew, and Max Perutz. Remember him? Plus, Rosalind Franklin and others even helped map the structure of DNA, probably the most famous result of X-ray crystallography. Today, the work hasn't stopped. Crystallography remains the foremost technique for working out the atomic structures of almost anything, which is very useful for finding out why things behave the way they do. From the metallic structure of the blades of a jet turbine to the immune system fighting off viruses. Turns out, Max was right. Modern crystallographers are doing exactly the same thing as the Braggs, just at a larger scale with more sophisticated mathematical methods and more impressive machines. Crystallography is even reaching beyond our planet. The Curiosity Rover is now forming X-ray diffraction analysis of the soil on Mars. But there's plenty of unfinished business back on Earth. There are still many thousands of complex molecules to look at, and a lot more questions to answer. So what, why we know so much about how crystals look like and what is actually inside a crystal is because of this X-ray crystallography. And I also they also mentioned something about um, looking at structures of viruses. So this kind of technology also helped, of course, with identification of the, the um, coronavirus or the COVID-19 um, structures and so on. Okay, so let's go back to our crystal. So we found a crystal and we want to find out what it is. So remember what we did, we shoot an X-ray onto our crystal and this is how the X-ray pattern of the crystal looks like in one direction, okay? And from this crystal pattern and from this arrangement, we can figure out, um, so we examine the dark spots and you can see that some are darker than the other and they are arranged, not really like uh, scattered all over the place, but they arrange in, in a kind of a shape. And this is basically, this provides us information on where the atoms are basically sitting in our structure, in our unknown crystal. Okay, and now comes the story. What we are going to do now is we are going to build the crystal structure. And uh, so this is basically, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, show you how to do this. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have two color jelly tots, okay? And the jelly tots are your atoms. So they represent your atoms and the toothpicks are going to represent your bonds. And we're gonna join the atoms and uh, with, the, with the bonds, okay? And we're gonna build a, a 3D structure. Okay, so let's get going. Right. Okay. So first of all, I hope that everybody's got their atoms ready. There we go. So first of all, you have to decide which one is your atom B and which one is your atom uh, A. Right. So I'm going to make these ones, this color here, my atom A, and this color here, my atom B. So very important. Same colored atoms don't like to be next to each other. Okay, so what does that mean? So I cannot connect same colored atoms like this. Whoops, like this. 
okay? That is not possible. So we always have to arrange one color, the next color, the next color. And then we're gonna have another color like this. Right, and I'm gonna build it like this. So I hope that you can see it. I'll just make it a little bit better. Okay, so you can see now I've got a green, a dark, whatever color that is, another green, a dark color, green color, dark color, green color, dark color, green color. Now I'm going to join this. I'm going to take one toothpick. This is my bond, and I'm going to connect it to the other atom. Okay, and I'm going to connect this one here. There we go. Right, and then I'm going to connect the next ones. Like this. And I'm going to connect the next row. All right. Okay. And now we're going to have to connect these ones together. So this is going to be our layer. And you can see it's going to be a fairly, a fairly, and I'll put it in inverted commas, a fairly stable layer. All right. Now, for the next layer, which is going to be on top of it, we have to remember, okay, I cannot put a green above here. So we have to now place a dark color, a dark color there, a green color, dark color, a green color, a dark color, a green color, a dark color, a green color, a dark color. And we're going to connect the next layer. Right. Just like this. So again, we're going to make a row. And again, we're going to connect the strands here together. Like this. So it's just like making layers of similar to our Lego blocks. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to want to place this layer here on top of here. So again, we need some bonds to connect the layers. So we're going to have some upright bonds here. And this is why you need so many toothpicks. Okay, and now comes the tricky part, and it always is good if you have somebody to help you. Now you have to connect the layer. Okay. Oops. Okay. 
So now you can see that you have the light green, you have the dark color on top of each other. So not the same one. So now we want to add another layer. So in this case, we have to build the bottom layer again, right? So we're gonna have a light color, a dark color, a light color, dark color, light green color, dark color, light green color, dark color, light green color. And we're gonna join the last layer that we're gonna build. These toothpicks are not very good, so that's always good to have some backup toothpicks. Okay. And we can connect the layers. add the next layer, the last layer. Okay. So what we've built it just now is an atom, atomic model of our unit cell of a mineral or a crystal. What is it? Oh, it's falling apart. This is falling apart. Oh, you have to push it a little bit harder down then. And sometimes when your when your jelly tots are really, really fresh, mine are very, very old. Um, so if your jelly tots are really, really fresh, fresh, um, then they can be a little bit chewy. So you have to push it down a little bit. So make sure that they push down a little bit. Yes. And here we go. Right. Yeah, We've, we've ran out of jelly tots, so we have no to way. use raisins. You have to use raisins. What, what happened to the jelly tots? Did they disappear, <laughs> hey? Seriously. We, we used them all. <laughs> oh, you used them all. Oh, oh, you see, I'm, I'm very lucky. I still, have, I still have a jelly tot here, and I'm going to use mine as well, so I'm going to eat it. Okay. Mm, mm, yummy. That's very good. Mm. Awesome. Mm. That's like berry flavor. Very nice. Okay. So now we built the structure. And I'm pretty sure you want to find out what structure we built, right? Do you want to do you want to know? Okay, so what we're gonna do is the team is not to other people. Whoops, sorry. Sorry guys. My screen sharing has stopped. Stopped. I'm just going to go back. This is when you when you try to do shortcuts and it doesn't quite work. The shortcut. Here we go. Right. So okay, and I've got a, a few of these crystal structures that you can choose from. So which one do you think did you build? Is it salt? Is it graphite? If it's a diamond structure, ooh, awesome. 
is it a sphalerite structure or is it something that's called an olivin or is it something that's called a galena structure? What do you think? Salt. Salt. Awesome. And you're absolutely right. It is salt. Can it be something else? Diamond. Yes. So galena. It can also be galena. So, hmm, that is very, very puzzling, isn't it? So, so we, it can be a sword and it can be a galena. So, but, and I'll show you the difference. Whoops, sorry. Let me just go back. Let me show you the difference between sword and galena. So, we know that how sword looks like. Where's my sword? There's my sword, hey? So, sword is. What color is salt? It's white and it's tiny little crystals. And remember this shiny one that I showed you. This is in fact galena. And when I'm having it in my hand, and unfortunately you can't, I can't let it, let, let it um, uh, allow, uh, it, I can't give it to you, but it's very, 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 very heavy. And this is, yeah, this is very, very light. So, we have the same structure, but they look so completely different. So this one is black and shiny, and this one is shiny, but not black. And it's, it's, it's kind of white crystals, isn't it? <clears throat> so why is it the case? Why is it the case that, that um, we have the same structure, but they look so completely different? Who can tell me what kind of colors did you use in uh, with your with your with your structures? So some of you. We used what kind? Gray, yeah. Thins and jelly tots. Okay, what, what color are your jelly tots? Pink, Pink orange, black, black, black okay, and awesome. black. Okay. Black and red, green black and, red. and red. Oh, I and see. Pink. Okay. So, and, and when you remember, brown. mine was mine. Yeah. Are brown. Okay. All right, all right. Sorry, sorry. No worries, no worries. I love it. So, and remember what I used. I used light green and dark ones. And what they basically represent is they represent atoms. So the reason why we have different kind of structure uh, is because your sword basically has got sodium atoms and chlorine atoms, whereas your galena has got lead atoms and sulfur atoms. So the same structure, but there are different atoms involved. And this is why they give you different minerals or different crystals. All right, oops, that's coming next week. Okay, so what we figured out now is we figured what's inside a crystal. Inside a crystal, there are atoms that are connected by bonds. And who can tell me how many atoms did we use for this one here? For our, let's say, sword crystal. I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times three. Yo, 27, if I'm not mistaken, hey? 27 atoms. And can you remember how many atoms fit into a single grain of salt? That was this large number, wasn't it? 1.2 quintillion atoms. So, this is just 27 of these 1.2 quintillion atoms. So if you add like, whoa, more and more and more and more and more atoms, your crystal will actually grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. This brings me to the end. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you actually get some. Ah, uh, mine is still not so much. I've got this one here also, not really. 
I'm not very successful today in growing crystals, but I hope that you're more successful with your, with your crystal growing. So remember, if you don't get crystals, uh, when you, uh, when, when, once it cooled down, um, please just heat it up again and add more Epsom salt to it. And then eventually you will get nice little needles, long needles. They are very fragile, but they look very, very pretty, just like angel's hair. Right. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Much. Thank you very much. And we've got the Lego. Awesome. Good. Cool. And I hope that you're going to build lots and lots of crystals. Okay. And next time you're going to come across we've, a rock. We will. Super. Do you have do you have crystals at home? Do you have your own do you have your own minerals at home? No. Yes. Yes. Yes, you have. And and what what kind of what kind of what kind of minerals do you have? Do you know? Salt. You have salt. Awesome. That is so great. Salt. Fantastic. Okay. So for those who want to collect minerals, absolutely fabulous minerals. And, and South Africa has a huge wealth of, of different minerals. And there are only like 3,800 known minerals currently. Scientists still discover more, but it's not really much, isn't it? But they come in all sorts of different colors and they are some, some of them are so pretty and so nice. And some of them are really, really big. And it mustn't necessarily be all diamonds. And I've got, I brought, brought you a diamond here. I know it's in, in here. It's tiny, tiny. So it mustn't necessarily be a diamond. Remember, diamond is nothing more than this, carbon. And this is your graphite. Okay. So just in a, in a different form, in a different crystal structure. And with that, I'm going uh, giving it back to Kushle to make an announcement on what's going to happen next week. Thank you so much for attending, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanya, for a very, very um, informative session on uh, the life of crystals. Definitely helping us with um, uh, quite a few things that we, we, we didn't imagine and really, really didn't know. All right, so that was one of our workshops uh, from our Discover Workshop series. Now, just a reminder, this is, of course, part of the SciFest Africa program, which is completely a digital program uh, between um, the year, which started last year and is going on for a period of six months. We have webinars and we have workshops um, that are going to be coming up within the next few weeks. Um, in this particular um, workshop Can series, Yes. We've got lots of sticks from from building from building the minerals inside the crystal. Okay. So if you have more jelly tots, or maybe you want to get more jelly tots, and you can make an even bigger crystal, hey? So you can you can add on. So you can make the biggest crystal, hey? How's that? But we will have to get a big jug. Absolutely. I'm, I'm in full support of this. So, so you have to ask very nicely. I know that there are these big packets of jelly tots, you know. Also in big, lots of salt. And lots of salt, yes. And you build lots of salt crystals. Fantastic. Okay, again, uh, thank you very much, Tanya, uh, for what was indeed a very informative session. And I, and I would like to encourage um, our guests that did join us today to please inform their friends and uh, inform also um, some other parents and their school teachers 
um, to get as many children involved and many people involved as possible in the upcoming sessions, in these very informative upcoming sessions. Uh, today we're talking about discovering nanotechnology and talking about what is inside a crystal. Very, very interesting things um, that we learned about even the everyday uses of crystals and how they exist in the products that we use from day to day. Coming up um, in the Discover series, we're going to talk about discovering DNA, talking about the recipe of life and all living organisms. And of course, we're also going to be talking about um, the discovering a crime scene investigation. We'll be talking about a chocolate cake case so two more sessions to go within the discover workshop series two down at this particular moment my name is Gushen Lazana and I thank you very much for joining us in our session and I think we will be ending it right there today uh, many many thank you sorry Kushen, can I just chime in next yes. week is going to be actually, it's the first session next week I know that I know that I've got lots of fans for that we're going to discover volcanoes. Don't forget the yes. volcanoes. Yes, yes, yes. And the volcano series. Uh, um, and yeah, thank you very much um, for that. And uh, we'd like to thank also our guests, everybody that joined us on Facebook, and uh, to thank everybody that interacted with us. I think we'll be ending our session there today, and uh, we'll be looking forward to the next session, uh, which we'll be talking about um, discovering volcanoes and discovering DNA and a whole lot of other things that we'll talk about in this Discover workshop series. And also do join us for our other SciFest Africa sessions. All you have to do is visit our website at SciFest Africa and uh, you will see the webinars that we've done up until this point. You'll see some of the other workshops that we've done up until this point. And there is also going to be a recording of this very session that will be available. Thank you to those of you who are with us on Facebook. Thank you to those of you are with us on Zoom. Um, until next time, goodbye. Bye-bye. Cheers.